Jamaica Who is the immigrant? If we are living in the same land, sharing the same sun and now we welcome to Impact Talks, Raymond Carago, a UK-educated Kenyan living in Los Angeles and pursuing his dream career as an actor. In spite of many adversities typical of the industry, Raymond has done some great work, his latest being his short film, Stand Up, which was screened at the prestigious Cannes Film Festival to great reviews and was also accepted into the LA International Film Festival, winning the Bronze Award for Best Film. I just have to celebrate you. Welcome again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... Um, how did you know that you wanted to pursue acting? Um, I got into acting, to be honest, my whole life, but I didn't know it till I was about maybe 17. Really? Yes, because everything I wanted to do was influenced by movies. And then when I got to 17 and I was mm -hmm. in theater class, I was like, I can do everything mm -hmm. by being an actor. <laughs> did coming to, because you're UK educated, when did you come to the United States? I came to the United States in 2015. Okay. And was that when you got the bug, or was this bug all the way? Oh, this bug was... <laughs> I came to L.A. to pursue acting. Okay. I, I came here to study acting. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So tell us about your film, Stand Up. I'm curious about it. Does oh. it have anything? Uh, Stand Up is a film I wrote. It was originally my thesis film for school. Mm -hmm. And because for our school, school I went to, we, for our final, we had to write, act in, and produce our own short film. Mm-hmm. So mine was about a young man from Africa who mm -hmm. wanted to be a stand-up comedian, but the family he was from were very traditional, okay. business-oriented. So it was just about you know standing up for yourself, being your own person, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And it's had a good festival run, it has screened at the Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. uh, among others, including the Burbank Film Festival. And actually, recently was accepted into the Dream Machine International Film Festival and won Best Concept. You know, the reason I'm having this conversation with you is because I want you to show how you're so balanced in spite of everything. We talked about the mental health issues and everything, and yet you're doing all this great work. Do you find that that industry centers you and at the same time causes you trouble? <laughs> uh, Hollywood's a complicated one. Because I actually was talking to my friend about this because uh -huh. he goes through something similar. Yes. And I am I feel most at peace yes. when I'm doing what I love. Wow. It's very it's old cliche. Yes. But when I'm on set, when I'm even in a class, I yeah. just feel mm -hmm. safe yes. and at peace. Do you think that young people, because you are young, mm -hmm. do you think that young people <laughs> dealing with mental health issues even understand what they may be going through? Because you are very mature for your age, as I would say. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering how mental health affects young people. Do you meet a lot of young people who are dealing with this issue and wouldn't come forward? I feel like, from my perspective of people I've met, mm -hmm. maybe it's not, un maybe not understand is not the right word, but maybe underestimate. Underestimate. Underestimate what it's doing to them. Correct. And their life. Many people brush it off and think, I'll just go work out. or Yes, I'll they'll go to the gym. We'll just go out and drink. And, and that can also be a cultural thing. And they don't really under underestimate, like, this mm -hmm. is some deep stuff that you need to talk about. Yes. With time, it reveals mm -hmm. how deep it, it does. is. It does. As an African immigrant, and you're from Kenya, mm -hmm. do you think that the African male is more predisposed because African males and most immigrant cultures in general are raised to be tough? Mm -hmm. That toughness, did you experience that? Did anybody tell that, ah, toughen it up? Oh, yes, yes. And um, even people who are very close to me and very loving have, mm -hmm. in a very loving way, said to just move on. And deal with it. And, and, and deal with it. Don't think about it. Focus on what you love and i wish it was that easy i do <laughs> I, I do too if it was that easy I would, mm -hmm. I, i'd be like hey let's do it let's do it but um it's 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 not you've wanted this platform for the longest time what's your message to young people that might be struggling talk to young your millennial don't shut it out seek help talk Good. to someone even if it's your friend your, your girlfriend priest, imam, rabbi, whatever, mm -hmm. it it's okay. And anything you might have experienced is not your fault. Thank you. And any anything, any, any destructive behavior you may have done as a result of any trauma is also not your fault. But it is up to you and that you owe it to yourself and to the people that love you to seek help because you're not alone 
and there's someone that loves you and God loves you. That's very precious. Let's just wrap this up. You tell us why you wanted to share the story with the world. Mm, a year ago, I was in a suicide home. And that was one of the lowest points of my life. And like I said, 2018, going into 2019, it's been a very, I've had some very low points. I've, there have been further suicide attempts on my part. And I've just had very, very many low points. And no one, no one deserves to go through that. And, and I find that not seeking help is one of the biggest mistakes of my life because I stopped going to therapy at one point and that was one I deeply regret that and it's affected me very badly affected my creativity my relationships with people and as well as my own self-esteem and while I'm working on myself the least I could do is if I could help at least one person not go through that you know well you've said it all and uh, like you said talk to someone Hopefully by talking on the radio and talking to our TV audience, yeah. you are finding strength. And you know you can call anybody here on this panel with you today. We have a new family. And anybody out there that needs help, please, please seek help. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for your courage. And I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. And this is Impact, and I'm Pamela Anchang on KPFK 90.7 FM.